Ba-dum, ba-dee, hey, kia ora, Helen Brown's here coming to you live from Sun City in Arizona. Hope you're having a super fantastic, sparkling start to Serenity Sunday. Oh, how's your Sunday starting? Mine's awesome. I still haven't gotten had a shower and gotten dressed yet. I'm in my PJs. Bed here. Yeah. <laughs> it's like as if he's already been out to say hi. She's back in bed. Um, but it's just been a nice, quiet, relaxing start to the day. Didn't get up till 6.30. Yeah, I know. I'm awake at 5, but I didn't get out of bed till 6.30. I just kind of laid there and dozed and just snuggled down. It's a little cooler this morning. The heat kicked in, and we have the heat coming on when it gets to 59 inside the RV. Um, once I get up, I bump it up to 65 to keep it there. So it just turned off. So we should be okay for a couple of minutes. But if you hear a roar coming on, that's what it is. Uh, but it's been just such a, an amazing, I love quiet, relaxing starts to the day because they, they energize me. Some people need coffee. Some people need tea. Some people need something else, whatever it is that you need to get started. In the morning. I like my quiet time. I wake up energized. And I have my quiet time, and I feel more energized at the end of my quiet time than when I started. So that's kind of like my caffeine boost. <laughs> I do I do manage to get one of these done early on. This is my second bottle of the morning, and I've been up since, what I say, 6.30, so in two hours. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a bottle behind. <laughs> but I just finished watching... I've, Got all my stuff done this morning. I just finished watching the next video and the raw chocolate course that I am taking. Oh my gosh, I don't know where this guy is standing, but he's on like a rooftop. He's got a very low wall behind him. There's a cloth draped over one part of the wall. He's got this little, it was almost like a card table, but it's up high enough that he's able to stand behind it. And um, it's at a good height for him. And he's always there in his chef's jacket and uh, has his little things. But he, and the only measuring device. <laughs> This is hilarious. The only measuring device he had, oh, I should have bought one over, is just a spoon. Just one that, you know, like a breakfast cereal spoon, just a spoon, not a teaspoon, not a tablespoon, a spoon. Everything is measured in a spoon. And it's so funny because he was dating an almond. Um, everything he does is, um, is raw. So it's all raw ingredients that he uses, not pasteurized, not processed, just raw. Um, it's kind of funny. He needs some ground almonds. And he goes, he goes, now we need about, and he goes, and he brings out this big heaping teaspoon, <laughs> I mean, spoonful, brings out this big heaping spoonful, and he wants one and a half spoons. So his idea of one and a half spoons is a heaping spoonful and one that's just above level. <laughs> and I, I crack up watching these videos every time because he is so quiet and so gentle, and he's got this great accent, and he's got all these houses out behind him, so it's like he's on a rooftop somewhere. And it's almost like he's somewhere in the med, in the Mediterranean or something. With um, um, and he's always doing, and they're always doing these around sunset. So it's really quite a cool because you get to see the sun going down a little bit, and you get a bit of a breeze up there too. You had something blow away the other day, <laughs> but today it was chocolate sauce, and he was so funny because he's just talking about granola, and he turns around, and he says, "Now this granola is not raw." He says, "You really can't find raw granola." He says, "But sometimes I just like to change it up a little bit." And make it a little special. <laughs> and I'm like, thinking, granola is like a change up, like a treat. Wow. <laughs> I'm like thinking, there's all these beautiful chocolate recipes. This was chocolate recipe number four. Yeah, number four. <laughs> and he was changing it up a bit by adding granola. <laughs> As a treat but he had this beautiful dark rich chocolate sauce and he takes a banana he cuts it across and then he cuts each half lengthwise and he takes his hand and he dips it into this gorgeous dark smooth chocolate sauce which is on the thick side and it's been does and the ingredients he put in there like tahini um if you don't know what tahini is they use it to make hummus um so I put some tahini in there and the almond the ground almond to help it stick to the banana um, and then he's going through all the different types of things that you could use to this chocolate sauce well, like strawberries. He goes, but it's not strawberry season right now. <laughs> so, he, so he says, so you have to experiment with the strawberries when they come into season. <laughs> but he's going through things like apples and pears and bananas. And um, he says, you know, you could spice it up a little bit. And I'm like, thinking, oh, then he was talking about putting that spicy stuff into the chocolate, which I'm not a fan of. But if it's, if it's ginger, 
you can definitely put ginger in there um because i love nothing like um, dark crystal uh, it's like um crystallized ginger and dark chocolate not the bar it has to be the little balls and um they are so hard to find so using his chocolate sauce recipe today i was like thinking oh i could do my dark chocolate and i could get my crystallized ginger and chop it all up and throw it in there and make my own crystallized ginger balls I thought, oh that would be awesome and um so then he so then he would take his chocolate and he'd roll it in the granola which he'd also add a little bit of muesli to and he'd add some keiko nibs too as well keiko nibs are the raw form of keiko and uh, he says very healthy for you i'm so like i'm it you know but yeah there's so many health benefits to chocolate um and especially the way he's making it, it's like yes keiko powder keiko butter coconut oil um oh, my mouth was just watering and then he laid them on a plate put them in the fridge for 10 minutes Hang on. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, put them in the fridge for 10 minutes and then tortures us by tasting it. And he kind of does this little like, hmm. <laughs> but I, I love this instructor. I don't even know what his name is but um, or what nationality he is. But uh, he's just very entertaining to watch. And I'm sort of like, okay, um, I've got the, we get the recipes for each module that he's doing so we can go make them ourselves. And I'm like thinking, okay. Okay. okay, I'm making up my list, and uh, so I can go get my list because I want to. I don't want to just get some to use just a little. I want to make sure that I've got all the recipes all lined up so I can just like make different recipes each day. So, but it's with chocolate, oh, raw chocolate too. So it's all natural. There's no preservatives in it, no additives. Um, you use it when you're using um, the sweeteners. It's he uses honey. Is his favorite one to use natural honey, unprocessed honey, and I'm so like. Yes, I love unprocessed honey. And if you get the honeycombs, those are even better. Um, you just get them and just smooth them on some hot toast. Yes, I'm there. Um, but um, honey, agave, maple syrup. Um, what's the other one? Monk fruit he's used as well. So there's all sorts of different natural sweeteners that you can use. Um, he's even used dates in one where they um, chopped up some dates. Um, but he never uses anything electric. He just has a glass bowl and his spoon. <laughs> <laughs> and the spoon's like the size of a dessert spoon um and it's just everything and he only uses the one spoon so for all the wet ingredients and the dry ingredients one spoon and today he did like all the wet ingredients first and then he's <laughs> and then he so then he gets his keiko powder and he, he always sift the keiko powder so he puts it into the surf into the sieve with a wet spoon <laughs> he just cracks it up but the stuff looks so good and i can't wait to try it and taste it and just like when i'm cooking that's kind of how i cook it's like here's a recipe change it up do whatever the recipe is the foundation when it comes to baking i'm a little more precise on my measurements um but um this whole chocolate thing it's sort of like you take one spoon it doesn't matter if it's wet or dry ingredients that spoon is used the whole he doesn't even wipe it off he just sort of like bangs it on the edge of the bowl shakes it a little around a little bit and then he goes and uses it for the dry ingredients so you know i'm sort of like thinking yes i'm in with that type of cooking i'm in and uh so he says you know just add he says he, he says just remember add less than what you think you need because you can always add more you can't subtract and i'm like that is so true and cooking when you're cooking anything, you cannot subtract. You can't say, oh, that's too sweet. I need to take some sugar out. No, 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 no. Start with less than, start with under what? Hey, Ziffy girl. Hey, Ziff. Somebody just woke up again. Um, you just start with the, um, with a little less honey than what you think you will need. And then you add a little more. So, yeah, so he's kind of funny with, with some of his things. And one of them was like three and a, three and a little bit. And <laughs> a little bit and it was almost, it was almost a level spoon and the other ones were all heap spoons so i was sort of like okay i got it i got it so it's, a, it's rough measurements spoonful completely open to interpretation whether you want it level or whether you want it heaped um, i'm going for the heaped and the half will be just above level <laughs> i get it what was that there was one ingredient he did and he says you just need a half of this and it was half of the length of the spoon but it was piled high in that half they just sort of like dipped the end of the spoon and came out with this pile which would have been more than a spoonful had it been laid out flat so but yeah it's kind of fun watching these um these videos but today is serenity sunday it's all about rest and relaxation i'm having a resting morning i'm about to go shower get dressed and then we'll go for our walk 
um, and then I'm going to come back and get a couple of things done. We're just going to take a nice easy morning this morning. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Nice and easy this morning because this afternoon I do have to work. I'm working this afternoon. Um, so one of our the people one of our um, the people that work over the weekend are actually taking a break. So um, yeah, the guy we have working over the week is taking a break. So we're stepping in and helping cover his hours and so doing half a day each. And uh, so I'm on this afternoon. So I'm looking. I'm kind of looking forward to it because it's not often you get to do a weekend and see what it's like on the weekend. So it may be slow. It may be crazy. I don't know, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll just take it as it comes and um, get some things done that need to get done. And yeah, that's it. So we're just going to kick back and relax this morning. And um, Zephy's already looking out the window, checking things out out there. So I'm going to run through the shower and uh, and then we'll go for our walk. It's only meant to be 60, 62 today, I think it is. It's really weird this week. Oh, chocolate syrup. Um, I need the weather. App. I don't even know. We're only getting into the 60s today. Yeah, we're getting to 64, but it's going to feel like 67. Yeah, the high today is 64. The high tomorrow is 68. Then it's 67 on Tuesday. Then we hit 71 on Wednesday. Yeah, we're kind of going to yo-yo this week. Our high is going to be, the highest temperature this week is going to be on Wednesday at 71. Then we drop to 70, down to 68. <gasps> then Saturday we're up to 70. And then all of a sudden, Sunday, we hit the 80s. Looks like we're going to be in the 80s for the rest of the week, with the high being 86 on Tuesday, the following week, on the 15th. Hmm. St. Patty's Day is looking good, though. 82 for St. Patrick's Day. That's what they're forecasting. But no rain in the forecast at all. Oh, we have a 1% chance on St. Patty's Day. And hopefully the wind stays down today, so we're able to... Have the, we haven't been able to have the awning out in the mornings when we've gone out for a walk it's been around eight nine miles an hour and then it just sort of like escalates throughout the day and yeah we kind of got a little rocking yesterday afternoon again too so it was like yeah and it looks like today's going to be the same sort of thing yeah, around seven to eight miles an hour and then we start creeping up again so we may get most of the day no, not really. Um, I like to get the hottest part of the day with the awning out because then it shelters the passenger side, which is where your refrigerator venting is. And they like you to keep that in the shade. But it's a little difficult when you get wind gusts. So, um, yeah. oh, a week from today. Remember this. A week from today, for those, for everybody, is daylight saving starts a week from today. Yes, so 13th of March. You realize we've only been out of daylight saving for four months. We spent four months of the year out of daylight saving and eight months of the year in daylight saving. Now, even though we're in Arizona and we don't move our clocks forward, we switch to Pacific time, which kind of cuts my mornings short now <laughs> because my morning would start at nine o'clock in the morning. Now I'm going to be starting at eight o'clock in the morning. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to be on Pacific time for the next eight months. And I'm like, oh, now I have to refigure my mornings because I just got a tip. Just got everything figured out and into my routine for starting at nine o'clock. And now I'm losing an hour, um, even though I'm not in daylight savings. So because um, Arizona stays at Mountain Standard Time, which is basically the same as Pacific Time. And I'm so like, damn it. <laughs> I just got used to having my 9 a.m. starts and finally got it all figured out and everything else. And now I've got to go change it back for the next eight months. Like, darn. Um, so, yeah. Why do we even have daylight saving? That I don't get. Why do we even have it? So anyway, it's Serenity Sunday. I'm just going to let it go. <sighs> and go have a super fantastic, sparkling, relaxing day. Um, Zephy's watching me. Just like, are you done with that yet? Because she knows as soon as I'm done, it's straight into the shower. And after the shower, it means that we get to go for a walk. So <laughs> without further ado, I am out of here for the rest of the day. Enjoy your day. We'll see you guys back here around 6 p.m. Pacific time. Um, see, I'm already 6 p.m. Mountain time this evening. And, um, oh, yeah, that's going to move too. See, I'm like thinking, you know, I like doing the 6 o'clock time for me. So that means I've now got to move it or do I leave it? So it'll still be 6 p.m. Pacific time. And I'm so like, thinking, yeah, I could work with 6 p.m. Pacific once we get to Pacific time. But the cool part is, is because I still work mountain hours, 
um, they'll be on their daylight saving hours. So my day is going to end an hour early, which means I can go get my mail at the end of the day when they tell me there's parcels there. Yes, and say let them sit forward for a week. So yeah, when I'm yes. Oh yeah, I gotta remember that bit. So if I work to 5 p.m. mountain time, that'll be 4 p.m. Pacific time. So I get to finish early. Yay! Which is really cool because coming up in June, actually, yeah, coming up in June, I get to, I'm doing two presentations for and the Polka Dots organization for their worldwide chapter, for their international chapter. So that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to that. So I've got to remember that everything I'm putting into my alarm, my, my alarm, in my calendar right now, I'm making sure it says mountain time so that um, when we switch, it knows that I'm in. Yeah, that's one thing I get, keep getting confused. My calendar and my clocks are all mountain time. But for some reason, my computer thinks it's in California. I'm like, what? So I think I've finally figured out how to change that. But every time I open maps, it defaults to California. And I'm like, I'm not in California. And I don't have location services turned on. I just told it where it's sitting. So we'll see if that works. <laughs> it's like my phone thinks I'm in California too. And I'm like, but you've got location on. You can see that I'm in Arizona. Which reminds me, I have to call the phone company because they're charging me California taxes on my bill every month. Yeah, no, 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 no. We're going to go get that fixed too. But anyway, go out, have a super fantastic, sparkling, relaxing Serenity Sunday. I know I am. And um, we'll catch you guys back here around 6 p.m. Mountain Time. Hey, Conera.